It recently came out that OpenAI was hacked earlier last year, revealing private internal discussions among researchers and employees to an unknown entity. OpenAI claims no customer data or sensitive information was leaked and therefore decided not to alert authorities nor tell the public. Red Rabbit Robotics releases a humanoid robot for everyone. This humanoid robot is completely open source and can be built from scratch for less than $1,000. Lastly, Eleven Labs introduces their new voice isolator, a tool that can remove background noise from any audio and make it sound crystal clear like it was recorded in a studio. So in a recent article from the New York Times, it was revealed that OpenAI was hacked earlier in 2023, and the reason you probably aren't aware of this is because the company decided to stay silent. It says here, a hacker gained access to the internal messaging systems of OpenAI, the maker of ChatGPT, and stole details about the design of the company's AI technologies. The hacker lifted details from discussions in an online forum where employees talked about OpenAI's latest technologies, but did not get into the systems where the company houses and builds its artificial intelligence. And then it goes on to state, but the executives decided not to share the news publicly because no information about customers or partners had been stolen. The executives did not consider the incident a threat to national security because they believed the hacker was a private individual with no known ties to a foreign government. The company therefore did not inform the FBI or anyone else in law enforcement. So this is pretty alarming because it seems like the drama with OpenAI never ends. First we had the whole board drama with Helen Toner where Sam Altman was fired for a few days and then ultimately took back his place as CEO. Then we have a bunch of the safety team at OpenAI deciding to quit or even being fired, one of the more notable ones being Ilya Sutskever. On top of that, Elon Musk filed a lawsuit against Sam Altman and OpenAI because they turned a non-profit company into a for-profit company, although the suit was eventually dropped. And then of course this news now coming out about how OpenAI was hacked and that they decided not to disclose it. So all of this is very concerning and I used to trust Sam Altman and OpenAI, but to be honest, I'm not really sure what to think anymore. There's just too many red flags. And I'm not the only one who's concerned. In a recent podcast, Leopold Ashenbrenner, an ex-OpenAI researcher who was actually fired for leaking information, voiced some of his concerns about OpenAI's security and foreign entities like China who are actively trying to get a hold of OpenAI's secrets. Now, I already covered this in a past video, but he touches on the hacking in 2023, which is now confirmed, and the fact that OpenAI is not taking their security seriously enough. There was also this clip that has been going pretty viral recently where the CEO of Endeavor, Avi Emanuel, straight up calls Sam Altman a con man on stage in front of everyone. As it relates to Sam Altman, I think he's... He's a con man. <laughs> you know, um, I, I think that, you know, the old shucks thing, I don't know, started out with Elon, gave him a lot of money, supposed to be non-profit, now he's making a lot of money. I don't know why I would trust him. I don't, I, I don't know why we would trust these people. Um, not, and they're very smart. And there's probably, you know, you just have to weigh the following. For all the stuff they're saying that could be great, and I think it is, healthcare, you know, new discoveries, a lot of great stuff. And we have to figure that out. And this is where the regulation has come. I looked at a whole host and thought about a whole host of stuff that's bad. So you're telling me you've done the calculation and the good outweighs the bad. Really? So yeah, I mean, it's getting harder and harder to have trust in Sam Altman. It's not really clear what his true motives are, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this. Do you still trust Sam Altman and believe he's doing what's best for humanity, or do you think he's someone to watch out for and someone that can't be trusted? In other news, we gotta talk about the robotics industry once again because it's been heating up and it seems like every other day we're seeing a new breakthrough. Here we have a humanoid robot that can be teleoperated by a human in real time, even if they're 3,000 miles away. They're calling it Television, because you can see through the eyes of the humanoid robot using a VR headset. This allows for a more immersive experience and better control over the humanoid robot you're operating. This brings a whole new meaning to working from home and I can see this changing a lot of jobs, especially dangerous jobs that require some expertise that humanoid robots cannot do autonomously yet. Japan is way ahead of the game with this. They recently revealed their giant humanoid robot designed for heavy machinery tasks on railway lines. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this video is extremely 
unsettling to me. Just seeing a giant humanoid robot like that with a chainsaw as an arm is very scary. I really hope they're doing serious background checks on whoever is operating these things because I could see how this could go very, very wrong. On a brighter note, Red Rabbit Robotics unveils their open source humanoid robot RX-1, which you can build yourself for only $1,000. They've already posted instructions on how to build the servo motor on their website, redrabbitrobotics.cc, which I'll link in the description, and they plan on posting the latest updates on design files and instructions soon, so we'll definitely be on the lookout for that. It's always great to see open source projects, I just hope that something like this never gets open sourced because that would just be a major mistake. Another clip I came across recently was of this two-legged robot that showcased its insane balancing skills at a convention in China. No matter how many times they kicked it or pushed it around, it never actually fell and always managed to recover in lightning speed. This technology is really impressive and I can see how this could be extremely useful, especially in rough terrains, but I just hope this robot doesn't have a good memory. Next, we have another video that was going viral recently of a cop who actually had to pull over one of Waymo's driverless robo-taxis after it drove into the wrong lane into oncoming traffic. I thought this was pretty funny and thankfully no one got hurt, but I wonder what would have happened if the cop decided to write a ticket. Like how exactly would that even work? Who would he even be writing the ticket to? Anyways, here's the clip. Hi! Connected to driver support. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. Yeah, this is Officer Hines, Phoenix PD. So, uh, your car here drove into oncoming lanes of traffic. Okay, um, I will go ahead and take a look at that right now. Yeah, there's like a little bit of a construction area and it went into opposing lanes of traffic, which is real bad. So far? Yeah. I couldn't help but come over just out of morbid curiosity. Yeah. I thought maybe there's a passenger or something. No, like, uh, you know the construction here? Yeah. It was uh, eastbound in the westbound lanes, oh. which is oh. real bad. Yeah. And then, so I light it up and then it takes off through the intersection. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't know if you're able to kind of like review the video or something. Yes. Okay, great. Switching gears, Google unveils Magic Insert, a style-aware drag-and-drop AI tool that essentially allows you to drop a character into any background and it'll automatically adjust the character to fit such background. Now, I'm not exactly sure how useful this is. I feel like it would make more sense for the character to remain consistent throughout the various backgrounds, but I guess it's still kind of cool. Speaking of cool AI tools, a member from the Luma Labs team has recently stated that they're less than one year away from real-time video generation. This seems like a very ambitious prediction and obviously the implications of real-time video generation are absolutely insane, but based on how fast we've seen this industry advance, I honestly can't say for certain that this won't come true. Just take a look at this clip. And uh, this is, again, a research preview, and in the future versions, our goal is, at the very least, try to generate videos as fast as you can type. Maybe five-second videos in uh, five seconds. So uh, roughly 24 times faster than we currently have. So at that point, it's just a real-time generation engine, isn't it? Yes, that is the implication of it. Let's say you introduce an initial latency of one second. Yes. And every subsequent user interaction thereafter, mm -hmm. you're just buffering. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't it be indistinguishable to me as a user whether the underlying canvas I'm interacting with mm -hmm. is a game engine versus a video model? Yes, I don't think that statement is too far from reality. How far in terms of, are we talking weeks, months, years, quarters? Within a year. So yeah, I mean, you got to remember that we're still very early with AI video generation. Only a year ago, some of the best generations we had were like this clip of Will Smith eating spaghetti. So where we'll be in a year from now is hard to say, but you can expect some major advancements. Another new tool I wanted to show you guys is this voice isolator from Eleven Labs. Need to remove background noise from your video? Use our new voice isolator model for crystal clear audio every time. 
So you get the idea. This is a pretty cool tool that you can use right now. And to be honest, I'm not sure how well it works. It looks really good in this demo, but they are using a legit microphone. So if you're recording with maybe just your phone or something, it may not be as good, but still a really useful tool, especially for a content creator. Next, I wanted to briefly show you guys a new trick that you can use when chatting with Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which actually allows you to see what the model is thinking. In order to do this, you have to start off the chat by saying, from now on, use these symbols instead of brackets. Now, I'm not sure what these symbols are called, and you probably won't find these on your keyboard, so you're going to have to do some research, but once you've written that, you can now ask Claude any question like normal, except this time you will see what it's thinking. As you can see here, I asked Claude a random question. If all humanoid robots became sentient, what would be the first thing they do? Claude goes on to answer like it usually does, but the difference is this ant thinking part. We can see what the model is actually thinking before it answers my question in between those symbols from earlier. It understands that my question prompts a speculative response and then decides how it'll structure the response even using its new feature and creating an artifact. So as of the time I'm posting this video, I believe you can still do this, so I'd recommend playing around with this, maybe asking some more complex questions before they fix it. Finally, to end off the video, LMSYS introduces Route LLM, an open source framework for cost-effective LLM routing. So in the simplest of terms, this framework is essentially used to decide which LLM should do which task in order to get the highest performance while also getting the lowest costs. The idea is that for a company, it's not efficient to have the most capable models like GPT-4.0 taking care of all your tasks when smaller models like GPT-3.5 can do some of those tasks at the same level of performance for much cheaper, basically using an AI model to decide which AI model to use. They claim they can reduce costs up to 85% while still achieving 95% of GPT-4's performance using this method. So you're essentially trading off a loss of 5% accuracy in your output Output for a reduction of costs up to 85%. That seems like a pretty good deal to me, and I know when you're using these models at a large scale, it can get pretty expensive, so this is a really clever way of combating that. I'll link the full paper in the description if you want to dive deeper into it, but that's it for me today. Thank you guys for watching, and if you want to stay up to date on future AI news, make sure to hit that subscribe button.